what we see with with psychedelics generally and particularly with DMT. DMT, going back to, um, you know, you spoke about, um, you know, how do we explain? So we have this brain that's building the world using all of these models that it's learned. How then does it construct these hyper-technological, hyper-dimensional worlds yeah. that it hasn't learned to construct, filled mm. with beings that are not animals, they're not humans, they are utterly, completely mm -hmm. alien. How is that possible? Right, right. Um, and that's kind of my argument, uh, is that this shouldn't be possible. It's like the brain is speaking a language it never learned to speak, and doing so flawlessly. It, this is not a, it's not kind of fumbling around and just trying to make sense of this disordered or chaotic brain activity. It, these are razor sharp, engineered right. to utter perfection worlds. And they are not dreams. They are not dreams. Um, that's, they're often dismissed as waking, waking dreams, you know, hallucinations. But again, going back to dreaming, in, in the dream state, you can actually, I'll tell you a little story that I was telling Matt the other day, yesterday. Um, when I came back from Tokyo last time, sorry, came back from the US from uh, back to Tokyo, um, I, ha I had a series of lucid dreams where I was... Oh, really? For some reason, when I'm jet lagged, I get lucid dreams. I don't know why. I've had them since I was a child, but very completely unpredictably. But during this period, I was having a lucid dream almost every night. And I was in this dream and I was on this beautiful green mountainside. It looked like Switzerland or something. Very nice. And then there were, there were hundreds of dogs running down this mountainside. And I knew I was dreaming. Um, and so I thought, okay, I'm going to do a little experiment. Um, we know that in the dream state, the brain doesn't have access to information from the primary visual cortex. That's quiet because that's receiving sensory information from the environment. Mm -hmm. So that's all quiet. So all the fine details of the world in the dream state aren't being represented. So you can dream of a dog, but it will be a a shit dog, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, a broad dog, but mm -hmm. if you get and, and and they look like dogs, and you if you don't know you're dreaming, you wouldn't act, you wouldn't know any different. Um, but I I knew I was dreaming, so I got really close to one of these dogs, like right in its fucking face, yeah. And I thought I'm going to see how good you are, you know how how good my brain is at modelling this dog, and they it was a rubbish dog. <laughs> 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 it was just really bad wow. when it got and, and that made sense because my brain it knows how kind of how to build a dog mm -hmm. but unless it's got sensory inputs it it does a pretty poor job when you get down to it wow. and so and so that kind of makes makes me think and you see the same thing with psychotics um in that the visual primary visual cortex often just isn't involved when they're um having visual hallucinations, the brain is just using these higher level models, yeah. object models to construct these hallucinations. Um, so then when you look at DMT, it's kind of remarkable. These aren't just sketches or kind of broad brushstroke representations of alternate worlds, you know, just using these high level models. These are inordinately detailed, crisp, perfect worlds that are perfectly coherent you know staggeringly dynamic narrative complexity it's it's like the brain has somehow rece started receiving extremely detailed sensory inputs and you know like the brain is kind of tuned in instead of receiving information from the normal sense organs it's somehow it's receiving information from somewhere else and that's why it can build these staggeringly complex worlds that have no relationship whatsoever um, to the normal waking world. Mm -hmm. um, so this kind of, this idea got me thinking about that possibility that DMT is gating access to some alternate source of inputs. Mm -hmm. Information is being directed into the brain in the DMT state. The brain is more sensitive as I said before, it's more sensitive to information inputs because of its excited state. Mm -hmm. And it's also much more fluid. Mm. So it's, and, and there was actually a study done by the Imperial College team, literally just a couple of months ago, that looked at 
the changes. They've done a few really cool studies, and I'll talk about them um, with DMT. Um, but this most recent one showed that in the DMT state, if you basically if, if you perturb the brain, right, you stimulate it either with visual inputs or maybe a little electrical impulse, you'll see you you see a little kind of increase in activity as the brain kind of rings, if you like, as all the information starts spreading through the brain, right? This is just normally like this, yeah? Mm -hmm. In the presence of DMT, it's more like, right? Because it's so sensitive, you know, it, you just perturb it a little bit. Right. And it kind of, it, it's, it's so sensitive and responsive to these inputs. So that kind of makes sense, right? Mm. That this would be the kind of state where the brain can start receiving information from what some kind of, intelligence perhaps some kind of in intelligent agent um, but at the same time if that was the case perhaps you'd expect to see because what you can do um, is as well as kind of measuring neural activity in an in, in a MRI or with EEG you can also measure now the flow of information through the brain so when someone is let's say viewing uh, an image on a screen, you can actually see these waves flowing from the back of the brain, the primary visual cortex that's receiving the information. You can see them flowing forward. Mm. Yeah, You can also see waves flowing in the opposite direction. You get this kind of forward and backward waves. Wow. Now, if they close their eyes, then that, those forward flowing waves, they, they stop because they're not processing visual sensory mm -hmm. inputs. Yeah. But with DMT, something very interesting happens. Uh, even when they have their eyes closed, you inject them with DMT and you immediately, or within a few seconds, you start to see these forward flowing waves traveling from the back of the brain as if the brain is receiving visual sensory inputs. Wow. Now, the question is, is, I mean, and they even said, this is the, the, the the pattern of brain activity was indistinguishable from visual sensory inputs. It's like they're seeing with their eyes shut. Um, but the question is, is, well, where's that, you know, is this just spontaneous activity in the primary visual cortex? You know, that part of the brain that represents lines and shapes and very basic things, is that just becoming spontaneously active and the information is flowing forward? Maybe, but would that explain hyperdimensional cityscapes and uh, you know you know hyper technological worlds filled with alien beings i don't think it would would memories explain that you know could we imagine it's information coming from the hippocampus i don't think that works either um, it's not object models the brain has learned to construct in you know, the higher levels of the cortex so it's all missing as far as i'm concerned um, there's no way to explain it mm. um, but if the brain is becoming sensitive and is receiving information from some alternate source. So then that's exactly what you'd expect to see. You'd expect to see it flowing through the brain. Of course, the source, we don't know, but I, I posit that it's some kind of intelligent agent. Does that happen too, where you see the brain waves coming back forward from the visual cortex when people are dreaming? So when they're dreaming, the, the primary visual cortex is, is generally quiet. Because that's the part of the brain that's receiving information right, yeah. from the you environment. Just explain that. Same with psychotic visual hallucinations as well. This part of the it's brain is off. quiet because on they're DMT, not using that part of the brain. They're just right. using this, the stored models to generate hallucinations. Mm -hmm. With DMT, it actually looks exactly like visual stimulation, even when their eyes are completely closed, as if they're wow. literally. I mean, they are literally seeing another world. Yeah. 